Welcome to video 6 into my series of Microsoft Fabric DP700. In this video I will look at lake houses and PySpark. So a lake house recap. The lake house combines a data lake and a warehouse. Data is stored in Parquet files with a delta transaction number, which provides ACID reliability. So ACID means atomic, consistent, isolated and durable. For Fabric, this means atomic equals changes to a table are either all applied or none were applied. Consistent means that values must follow database rules, so invalid root values get rejected. For example, not null would reject null values. Isolated means different sets of changes don't interfere with each other while they are running, and durable means once changes are finished, they are saved permanently, even if the system crashes after. A lake house can store both structured and unstructured files such as CSV and JSON. The lake house is designed for large scale data engineering and machine learning preparation. In Fabric, PySpark notebooks are often used together with the lake house to transform and analyze big data. What is PySpark? So PySpark is the Python API for Apache Spark, which is a distributed data processing engine. It allows you to analyze and transform data that is too large to fit in a single computer. In Microsoft, PySpark connects directly to Delta tables stored in OneMake. It is wildly used by data engineers for extract, transform and load, and by data scientists for machine learning preparation. So PySpark basics, data frames. A data frame is the main data structure in PySpark. You can think of it as a very large table. Data frames hold both structured and semi-structured data. The schema can be either inferred automatically or defined manually for more control. Data frames are the foundation for nearly all PySpark operations in Fabric. Transformations versus actions. In PySpark there are two main types of operations, transformations and actions. Transformations build a logical plan but do not run immediately. This is called lazy evaluation. And examples of transformations would be select, filter, with column, drop NA and join. Actions trigger the plan but don't actually run, but actually do run the computation. For example, actions would be count, show, collect and write. So some common PySpark functions. Um, so spark.read.parquet loads parquet files into a data frame. df.select selects one or more columns from the data frame. df.filter filters rows based on a condition and df.withcolumn adds or updates a column in the data frame. df.dropna removes rows that contain missing values. df.groupby and then column and then dot aggregate groups rows and runs aggregations such as sum or average df.order sorts rows by one or more columns df.join joins two data frames together on a key column and df.distinct returns only unique rows from the data frame you know, PySpark actions as I mentioned transformations can be thought of as instructions they don't run until an action is called whereas actions trigger execution actions are what tell Spark to actually process the data and give you a result. So some examples of this would be df.count, and this returns the number of rows in a data frame. df.show displays the first number of rows in a data frame, often used for checking data. df.write.format, delta.save, saves the data frame as delta table in OneMake. So partitioning basics. Partitioning splits data splits a data set into smaller parts based on column values. When you query, you, only the relevant partitions are scanned, which improves performance. For example, if sales partition is partitioned by year, a query for 2024 only scans the 2024 partition. Partitioning is key to scaling analytics in Spark. And this is an important part of the exam. So, when to use notebooks versus pipelines versus data flows. So 
Notebooks are best for working with very large or complex data. They allow PySpark code for cleansing, transforming and preparing data for analytics or machine learning. Notebooks are flexible but require coding skills. Pipelines are used to automate and schedule workflows. They can copy data, trigger notebooks and load results into a warehouse or lakehouse. Pipelines are important for production scenarios where data must be refreshed regularly. Dataflow Gen 2 provides a low code option. They allow analysts to prepare and transform data using a gra graphical interface. Data flows are integrated with Power BI, making them ideal for business users without coding knowledge. So now onto some questions. Question one, what is the main purpose, the main reason to use PySpark in Fabric? A, to design Power BI dashboards. B, to process large data sets in a distributed way. C, to manage user roles and permissions, or D, to copy small CSV files manually? And the answer is B. PySpark is designed to handle large data sets by distributing processes across a cluster. The others are incorrect because Power BI dashboards are separate from PySpark. Rule-based uh, rule access um, manages permissions, not PySpark. Small CSV imports are handled with copy into or data flows. Question two, which of these tasks is best suited to a fabric notebook with PySpark? A, scheduling daily data loads. B, writing new code transformations with Parkray. C, cleansing and transforming raw IoT data. Or D, assigning access permissions to data sets. And the answer is C, cleansing and transforming raw IoT data. PySpark is great for cleansing and transforming raw, complex data sets such as IoT data. Scheduling loads is done in pipelines. Data flows handle no code Power Query transformations and permission is handled by RBAC, Rule Based Access Control. Question 3. What format does PySpark often write data back into Fabric? A. Delta, B. XML, C. Relational, or D plain text and the answer is delta. PySpark writes results back in delta format which is parquet with a transaction log. XML is not widely used in Fabric, relational is not a file format and plain text is inefficient for analytics. Question 4. Which PySpark function returns unique rows? Drop duplicates, union, distinct or intersect? And the answer is distinct. Distinct returns only unique rows. A, drop duplicates on selected columns. B, combines, combines data frames. And D, intersects returns common rows. Question five, which PySpark function removes rows with missing values? A, drop NA. B, fill NA. C, replace or D, filter. And the answer is drop NA. As it drop NA removes rows with null values. B replaces um, B and A replaces nulls, C um, replaces values, and D filters rows. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.